Hey, what's going on there, folks? Good evening. It is the Earth Master back here on this Friday night, May 5th, 2023. It's about 9.43 here p.m. in the state of Texas, Central Time. Uh, it is the Earth Master here and uh, on location with Missy Mimi's. We're out here covering some weather events. We spent most of the day driving around today. Seen some pretty large hail uh, and also quite a bit of lightning and whatnot here around Central Texas. Uh, unfortunately, I was in the area with very intermittent uh, service as far as the uh, cell phone coverage goes. So I was unable to uh, live stream. So hopefully tomorrow we'll see how that goes. Latest earthquake is out here in Texas at 3.1 uh, west of the Pecos, Texas area. And a little swarm out here into the oil fields in the western Texas region. Also a little bit of activity up through Oklahoma. One earthquake, a little odd earthquake down here very close to the uh, Rio Grande, 2.2 near Asherton, Texas area. Um, let's take a look and see what we have out there. I can only guess. Looks like, uh, well, <laughs> my guess was correct. A whole bunch of oil fields out here and wastewater disposal facilities. I can see these ponds out here in the desert of Texas, along with all the little checkered boxes indicating the pumping operations uh, throughout this area of Texas. So a little bit of movement kicking off here into uh, the uh, Asherton area of Texas. All right, back and out of here, a little bit of movement across the New Madrid zone. Also some small earthquakes uh, close to the Georgia area. It looks like a 2.0 and a 2.4. Um, one underneath the other here, up against the, uh, kind of looks like the Lookout Mountains area. There's definitely quite a few fault systems that run through here. All right, West Coast activity where it's, I heard it's raining back home. Some cooler temperatures as well. One earthquake here west of the Salton Sea near Octello Wells, 2.7. Also a little bit of activity here in our swarming area just south of El Centro. Uh, no major movement though to make note of there in the southern portion of the state. A little bit of earthquake activity across the bay as well. Northern California, one earthquake south of Mount Shasta with a 2.5 near Dunsmuir. 10 kilometers deep. Nothing going on across the Cascadia for now. Uh, let's check out the trimmer map here real quick, see what we have going on. 73 epicenters of trimmer, uh, mostly here into the southern Oregon area, Cascadia subduction zone. Uh, some smaller microquake activity across the um, Pacific Northwest. Yellowstone did have a little bit of earthquake swarming uh, this morning. It looks like that has tapered off. Kind of weird how it just kicks up here for a couple hours uh, and then it just drops off dramatically. Uh, notice the USGS only put, uh, let's see, they, wow, so kind. They put two, uh, one 2.3 earthquake out there. Uh, so we got one out of probably 15 or 20 earthquakes that took place earlier uh, this morning. Since then, uh, not a whole lot going on. Looks like things have kind of mellowed off out there across the Yellowstone area. All right, uh, see what else we have uh, across the Pacific here. The Lucian Trench showing some movement up here into the area. Let's see here what's going on with my map here. Are we still on the net? It looks like we are. Uh, let's go back here to, that's kind of weird. Okay, we'll just refresh it. That's even better. Uh, a little bit of movement here in the Aleutian Trench. Um, looks like a, well, somewhat shallow earthquake activity. We did have 4.6 earlier this morning along with a little swarming aftershock activity in that region. Uh, kind of the big picture today is around the Japan area. They had a pretty strong shaker uh, this morning, a 6.2 on the west coast here of Japan. Since then, we've seen uh, quite a few fours and more recently a 5.9 up north here, uh, just off the north coast here of Japan into the Japan Trench. So this whole area is showing a lot of seismic elevated activity here. I was watching a little article on the uh, local, I think it was the local news here in Texas, uh, saying that they're expecting some stronger trimmers uh, in the days ahead. So I, I, maybe, maybe they know something I don't. Either way, definitely a, a little bit of elevated movement here across the Japan region. So keep that uh, in mind. Uh, across the Philippine Plate here down south, a little bit of activity across the Mariana Trench, 4.6. That was from yesterday, actually. Not a whole lot of movement across the uh, Java Trench for now. Uh, slight elevated activity here across New Zealand once again. Looks like uh, seen a 5.6 this morning early, 
and also a 4.7. Notice the deeper movement quake here this morning, uh, 194 kilometers deep into the northern end of the Hikurangi subduction zone with a subsequent shallower earthquake activity back building here prior to the Hikurangi, uh, 4.7 at 10 kilometers deep. So uh, a little bit of movement definitely kicking up here across the New Zealand area. Uh, the Big Island of Hawaii, not a whole lot going on here, folks, mostly around the Pahala area. Uh, space weather activity, just going to make this a, a real quick update because, man, I am tired. And uh, we're going to go at it again tomorrow. Looks like we are looking at uh, some elevated auroras tonight. Uh, looks like it could be stretching down into uh, a good portion of the uh, tier states here. Looks like North Dakota, South Dakota, Montana, Wyoming maybe even uh, Washington as well. Uh, this is all coming from a CME that uh, was blasted our way. Looks like we are expecting some G1 to G2 class uh, storming conditions here over the next couple nights at least. Uh, I don't see the most recent imagery here um, for the KP index, but I'm sure it's up there around the four to five range. Uh, as we can see there across the auroras, Looks uh, somewhat elevated, so keep your eyes open if you're into the uh, northern tier states. Uh, looking at some flaring activity as well over the past couple days with some M flare activity. Looks uh, like we've had a few of them very active here across the uh, sun. Let's go ahead and check out the solar sunspots for now and see what's going on um, across the area. We do have numerous sunspots here that are currently lined up with the Earth. And um, looks like a couple of these have weakened since this morning, but there's still a couple active regions that do harbor some uh, continued monitoring for some threat of M flares. Uh, looks like this region up here, also this uh, fairly large cluster, uh, do pose a hazard for some M flare activity. Uh, current threat level looks like a 99% chance for a C flare, M flare at 55, X flare around 15. Uh, so we continue to watch that uh, as the sun is definitely uh, pretty active right now. All right, Storm Prediction Center. We do have uh, well, a whole bunch of storming right now around the Austin area. That's going to dissipate overnight due to the uh, lack of, uh, well, we got heating. got plenty of heating out here. It was 97 degrees here where I'm at uh, in central Texas. And we had thunderstorms pop up all over the place here uh, just west of Austin late afternoon. And this is going to be the remainder tonight. Tomorrow looks like it's going to be about the same thing here across a portion of central Texas up into southern Oklahoma as well with a 2% chance of tornado activity. Uh, I don't think we had any tornado warnings here um, today, but uh, definitely had a couple severe thunderstorm warnings. And again, I was uh, all over the place here in the hill country of Texas and uh, with very intermittent service. So uh, I was basically um, driving around, observing the weather, also getting some video as well, but nothing of uh, worthiness to uh, post here to the channel. Just mostly some lightning and some, some moderate uh, hail that was kicking up out here. All right, folks, um, have a good night. Stay safe out there, and um, I'll see you guys back here sometime tomorrow. Have a good one. Say good night, Missy Mimi's. Good night, guys.